Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel or um, you can also say it's the channel of Threefold Christian Alliance which is a Christian ministry. Um, going back many many years ago the brand doesn't really matter so much. What matters is as one president of a Christian educational institution said many years ago, it's not the subject, it's the teacher that matters. That was, I heard that 20 years ago, and um, I've been thinking a lot about that um, since. It's not the subject, it's the teacher that matters. Today we have a big problem, not with the lack of information, we're drowning in information. We have a problem with the teachers. We have a problem with individuals who are teaching us how to know God, how to study the Bible, what does it really mean, what is the correct interpretation, what is the correct context of Scripture, what are the issues, the real issues of the day that matter what is the kingdom of God all about? What about the culture wars? What about society in general? What about marriage, family, children? What about the ills of society? See, all those things are part and parcel of what Christians like to call the Great Commission. Do you think that the Great Commission is simply Jesus coming to his apostles and saying, hey, go into all the world and hold Bible studies and just line up a few Bible scriptures and everything's going to be fine. Do you think that's going to do it? If that was going to do it, if this was going to cut it, and if we were going to see the world transformed by us going around setting up Bible studies and lining up a few Bible scriptures for us to read on whatever Sunday, Saturday, whenever your congregation gathers to worship, is that changing the world? Is this really changing people? Is it solving problems? Does it speak to any of the complex issues that we're dealing with today? I don't know. You probably have your idea of whether it does or not. But personally, I am really disheartened about the state of the teachers. Because I'm okay with people having different ideas. I'm okay with someone being a uh, Catholic or Lutheran or Baptist or Messianic. That's fine. Or Pentecostal or Charismatic. I can have a conversation with any of those people about, okay, you understand Scripture in this way, or I understand it in that way. Maybe somebody believes this is the right way. Maybe somebody believes it's a different way. Having different interpretations or opinions on what the essence of Christianity is about is one thing. But here's where we have, I think, a real problem. I think we have a lot of people today who literally are parasites. Parasites don't really have a life with God of their own. They, they don't have a life of their own. Parasites are thriving today in the world largely because of the internet and largely because of the state of mind in most people. Parasites are people who attach themselves to something or someone that generates life or value and they consume quickly. Some of them might be really dangerous fast-moving parasites or they could attach themselves to the living structure and hang on to it and draw life from it for a very long time and I think a lot of the people who are posing as teachers today in the Christian world I can't speak for like other domains but a lot of the people in the so-called preacher world, teacher world, ministry world. My humble perspective is that 
They're parasites. They're parasitic. Some of them don't even realize that they're parasitic, but they are. They have no actual original life with God. They are not investing the time needed to be invested in deep research and understanding of what Scripture actually teaches about God. They have no questions ever about anything. If there's one thing that gives away a parasite, they never have questions. Why? Because questions are a sign not only of intelligence, questions are a sign of life. Anybody who is alive has questions about life because how can you not? Look at life. Look how many things aren't right. What normal person and what person who is on a journey and a pursuit to know God and to know truth is not going to have questions about things of the past, about things of the present, and about things of the future? Who wouldn't have questions? Parasites don't because that's not important to them. Parasites feed off of somebody else or something else and their mission is is fulfilled by that act. The parasitic act of consuming value without producing value is the beginning and the end of the mission of the parasite. And so what happens is that we have today a lot of people who are maybe members of churches, members of whatever, they listen to some preacher, they go to some church services, they consume something of value, and they go off. But if you, if they were to be accountable, if they were to lay their life, and the question was to be asked, are you contributing value to something beyond yourself? Are you helping someone else? Are you giving out? What's your output? What is the output of your life? Are you going out of your way to actually help someone? Are you going out of your way to do something for someone without expecting anything in return? Are you actually solving any kind of a problem at all? The parasite will not have a good answer for any of those. Or they might lie. They might live in a fantasy world of their own where they think they're doing something. They think they're helping. They think they're doing ministry. But in the reality, they're not. They never initiate anything. And that's these are all signs. No questions. The other question is, the other sign is, they never initiate something. They don't know how to start something. Right? They never take risk. They always tag off of somebody else, right? And I'm not proposing that individualism is the greatest virtue or the solution to all of the world's problems. I'm not saying we shouldn't work together. I'm not saying that everybody is gifted equally or that everyone is some sort of a superhero, super productive, super successful individual, and that's the only way you Prove to yourself or the world that you're not a parasite. I'm not saying that. I'm saying everyone in their capacity should be able, if they were to be accountable to God, to themselves, and to others, they should be able to answer those questions. For example, uh, what are your questions about life? How come you never have any questions? How come you never ask a question and when someone answers, you just zip it and you listen and you'll learn because the only way for us to learn something is when we ask a question to zip it and listen intently. You're not listening so you can respond something. You're not listening so you can argue in your mind whether that's true or not. You're listening carefully and you're understanding what the person is saying to you. That's when you learn. And most people lack that ability. Parasites don't read books. Their mind is usually pretty 
underdeveloped in a sense that intellectually they deal with a very limited number of ideas. They don't challenge themselves. Why should they? They found a way to consume value in one way. And so why should they go out of their way? You know, in the example that I gave previously, why you go to a church, you hear some sermon or something, and that's it. That's it. Why go out of your way? Why go home and read the Bible? Why go home and read a book? Why go home and do a Bible study and have a discussion with your family members or with friends? Why do that? Just go to church, hear some sermon, that's it. Break out of the parasitic mode. Break out of it by realizing you are placed on the earth with a purpose far greater than just being a biological unit. The world is waiting for you to discover who you are. The world is waiting to hear from you what you received from God, the answers you went to God with, or the questions you went to God with, and the answers you received is what is the value that you can add to this world, okay? The next thing I pointed out was going out of your way to help somebody else. Parasites hardly ever do that. They hardly ever inconvenience themselves to go out of their way and to help somebody else with something else. And lastly, I'm going to wrap this up. The parasites are not just members of churches and Christians. The parasites are the teachers of today. Many of the so-called preachers, teachers, pastors, especially those who have never had a job, never really worked in the world, what we call the world, which is also reality, the reality of life, right? They live in a parallel universe, in a parallel world, and they don't know what to do with themselves. So they continue to to what they do then, the parasite, because they're not creating value, they're not solving problems, they don't really have an original thinking, or they're not really creative in any way, shape, or form. They're regurgitating, copying, and pasting, and they're just this endless cycle of just you know, remanufactured, recycled materials, recycled thoughts, recycled ideas, and then feed, and then they serve all this content to other people like themselves. And so they form an entire parasitic ecosystem. At the end of the day, the people, the individuals, and the communities, because it's not just parasitism as a culture. It's a way of thinking. It's a mode of operation, but it's also a culture. And that is actually the worst thing and the most difficult thing to change. You can kick out one parasite out of your life. If you identify a parasitic friend, for example, you can just discontinue communication and you say, you know what? I'm too busy. I don't have time for parasites. Um, A a group of people, a parasitic group of people, uh, for example, people who live off of, uh, of welfare for a long period of time. I can understand someone needing help for a season, but people who live off of welfare, how is living off of welfare for decades not parasitism? People actually live on welfare for decades, and then they create children, and they teach those children to live off of parasitism as well. So those are communities. But more than that is a culture. And culture transcends just what you do or this person, what they do. Culture is like this invisible, toxic cloud that descends upon entire segments of society. And it sucks a lot of people into its toxic, swampy reality. And they people can't get out of it. And so they consume parasitic stuff and they produce parasitic stuff and unfortunately a lot of the so-called preachers of today uh, especially those that are professional and are making money off of websites and clicks and podcasts and all that stuff they're just regurgitating they're recycling somebody else's original thoughts and ideas and they're getting paid and they're making money off of that i'll give you an example so somebody Somebody texted me on LinkedIn 
And uh, <clears throat> let me see. I'll just give you an example of a parasite. Somebody texted me a LinkedIn <clears throat> and said this. I just wanted to read the actual example. Here it is. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna read this to you. Okay. Hi George. I'm looking to make connections with other faith-driven entrepreneurs and professionals who are looking to do great things in business. Really? Okay. Guy gives me gives me his name. Let's call him Josh. His name is Josh. He gives me his website or email, phone number. Oh, Josh is looking for somebody to connect with like <clears throat> faith-driven entrepreneurs and professionals who are looking to do great things in business. Really? Why, why is Josh connecting with me? Hmm? What, for what? Looking to connect? Who has time to run around looking to connect? Obviously, the guy has an agenda. He's selling something. He needs customers. Okay? That's what's going on. It's not that Josh woke up and said, heard from the Holy Spirit, you know, George, you need to connect with George because I have a specific divine purpose for you and George to do something. No, no, that did not happen. Josh is looking for customers of some kind, okay? So, I'm playing a game here, and I said, hi, Josh. First time I'm hearing about, oh, on his website, he has a very kinky word that says, stewardpreneur okay so he's not an entrepreneur he's a stewardpreneur okay so that's that's like the super christian way of saying we're not entrepreneurs we couldn't be like all those people who want to make money we are great we are much better we are much more holy we're much more amazing we are stewardpreneurs you see it's creating these little cute sounding words that mean nothing because God wants us to be stewards. So therefore we're stewardpreneurs. We, we Christians just always have to have this noble thing. They have to attach nobility. They have to virtue signal about everything they do. And you know what? I don't give a crap about your virtue signaling. I don't care what you call it. You can call it stewardpreneurship. At the end of the day, buddy, you're out there to, to get customers of some kind. And you know what? In my opinion, you don't want to get customers. Go ahead, get customers. Make money. Give all your money to God. Give all your money to the poor. Do whatever you want. Just don't prop yourself and don't market yourself and don't sell yourself as this saint who is not really making money. I have this noble. I don't need you to convince me how noble you are. I don't need, as soon as someone starts to do that, in my opinion, they're a fraudster or borderline fraudster. Go ahead, be straightforward, say who you, who you are, what you want, what you do, what are you selling? Is it something of value? Maybe I'll buy it, make money, go ahead, give it away, donate it to the poor, do whatever you want, all right? Just don't do this little wicked thing to sell yourself like some holier than thou Stuartpreneur. Okay, so I said, hi, Josh. Yes, I'm a believer, and I'm a professional in cybersecurity and entrepreneur, or maybe stewardpreneur. Oh, Josh says, great to connect. What are you up to these days? Do you have any current challenges in your business and career? Really? Josh wants to know about my challenges in business and in my career? <laughs> so I said to him, Josh, is this a bot? It feels like it. Yes, I have challenges. What about it? So I'm playing a game with this guy. And I think that was a bot. That was a machine talking to me because that's what people do today, right? He doesn't even answer. He just says, up for a non-sales call? Am I up for a non-sales call? I want to hear more. Josh wants to hear more. Let's find a convenient time. And he sends me his his um, link to book a meeting. So I said, sure. I take Josh um, seriously. I actually made a, an appointment. I just wanted to hear what the guy has to say. I booked an appointment. He was supposed to be on the call half an hour ago, right? And of course, he didn't show up. No show. 
So I sent him a message, made the appointment, waited for five minutes, typical Christian culture of unprofessionalism. See, that's what we're dealing with. Parasites. Or are they predators? What are they? I don't know what they are, but they are not representing God. They're not representing true Christian values and virtues. They're not representing the kingdom of God. They're not representing Yeshua. They're not representing anything I want to be like. Just using some kind of bots, getting people, getting them to sign up for something. I went to this guy's profile, some, some, some kind of a coach. Everybody's coaches nowadays, okay? And you know what? If I'm so sick and tired of this, I can only imagine how sick and tired God is of all this. There is a lot of stench that's being emitted from planet Earth up to heaven. All this is stench in the nostrils of God. All this clickbaiting, um, popularity contests online, just scandalous preaching and teaching just to get clicks and traffic. It, it doesn't end. And the victim at the end of the day, what's being sacrificed? Authentic life with God. So if you're watching and listening, and if you're one of those people who have been disappointed by churches, ministers, pastors, Christianity in general, don't attribute that to God. God has nothing to do with any of that. All of those people, that entire toxic so-called Christian culture, all those parasites who are just pushing books and tapes and podcasts and coaching services just to make a buck or, or whatever they're after, I don't know. God has nothing to do with that. Those are all people who are using his name to make a living, sell something so they can just pay their bills. That's right. And I have a big problem with that, which is why I have left the so-called Christian professional world or preaching or being a professional minister of some kind, because that to me is a toxic culture. All those people who have to run around and preach, you know, 15 times a month so they can bring in I know, such and such offering and put it in the nonprofit budget and then pay themselves a salary, pay their staff, all that stuff, that's business. And actually, the only way to succeed in so-called ministry these days is to treat it as a business. Because to treat something as a business literally means to appreciate your resources, to know your objectives, and to use your resources to achieve certain objectives. Um, and when you, when you achieve your objectives, for you to be not broke, right? Now, people think that a nonprofit activity is um, you need to just waste money or spend money, but that's wrong. You know, money that's, been, money that's going into ministry should serve a purpose to such a degree that you know, you achieve your purposes and your goals, you still should not be broke, right? But ministry has become business. Churches have become business for people who actually parasitize off of Christians, off of churches, off of this whole culture. So it's like parasit culture both ways. And it's so sad. But it has nothing to do with God. God desires men and women to be healthy, in their hearts, in their minds, to live out of the issues of life, as Proverbs says. Your heart is the source of life, the source of questions, the source of pursuits, the creative ideas, the idea of how to solve a problem or create, create something of value. It's all in us. So you need to get free from parasitic friends, parasitic influences, a parasitic culture, get free from that. Just disengage from parasitic everything and try to connect with and to people who are truth seekers, truth speakers, and truth builders. We can actually 
build communities and environments and cultures based on truth. This is what the Apostle Paul says in his teachings, in his epistle to his disciple, the young Apostle Timothy. He says, the ecclesia, what we wrongfully call the church, the ecclesia is the pillar of truth. So what happens is that when number of people form together a body that of people, a community of people who reject parasitism, who seek truth, speak truth, and live truth, then we become a pillar, a tangible manifestation of what we call truth. If there is no pillar, there is no roof, right? And what happens is that the idea of truth is just an abstract thought, just an abstract idea floating around. But when there is a pillar, right, you put something on it. So now truth is on the pillar, and we are the pillar. So people can come, and by experiencing a community of truth, of people who seek truth and live truth and speak truth, then we embody truth, and we become a tangible representation of that. Find those people. Connect with them. Check out our website, threefold.life. Connect with me if you would like to be part of of such community. Um, we are in a initial stages of launching an international alliance of such people. We reject parasitism. We seek truth, speak truth, live truth. And at the end of the day, and in the end of our lives, we will answer to truth.